Mr. Teru, in this video we're going to do a single example of lines in three space. I'm laughing because I hardly ever do a single ex example in a video. We have two lines that are in vector form and we're going to determine or show, verify, that these two lines are indeed skew. So how are we going to do that? Well, the idea of being, uh, t lines being skew in three space is that we have lines that do not intersect. Now on two space, the only way that two lines don't intersect is if they're parallel and they don't maybe say have the same y-intercept where there's like many solutions. We want no solutions. So in two space, we only have to have parallel lines that say have a different initial point or a different y-intercept. But in three space, you can have lines that are parallel or you can have lines that are they're not parallel, they're not, uh, their gradients are different, but they still do not intersect. Uh, you can see that on a, in a room, now you can't see the walls in my room, but like the line which is where the wall and the floor meet uh, doesn't intersect with uh, a line where, where the wall and the roof meets but goes in a different direction. So skew, so we have two conditions that we need to check, not just one. The first time I saw this question, I just uh, looked at, you know, do they intersect and just ignored the whole idea of them being parallel. So here we go. For these two lines, and we do have two lines in vector form, which means that we're looking at um, sort of like a vector r is equal to vector a plus lambda or beta or alpha or whatever Greek letter we have that is a scalar multiple of a direction vector or gradient vector. So I might go in between saying coordinate and position vector so, so because vector r would be like the position vector from the origin to coordinate r and vector a is a uh, position vector from the origin so like O capital A so like A will have a coordinate um, and that's going to be a position vector for an initial or a known, known point that the line contains and then we have that plus lambda times some kind of gradient or direction vector. So I might say that this is the coordinate of a point, but it's really a position vector um, to get to that coordinate in three space. So just be aware of that sometimes I kind of go back and forth um, a little bit uh, arbitrarily. So in other words, when you're looking at the equation of these two lines in three space, you are seeing um, with this first vector and component form of 1, 2, 2, the coordinates basically, um, the x, y, z coordinate of a point that that line contains, and then after the scalar multiple of some kind of Greek letter usually, of in this case we have lambda and mu, we have another vector here of negative 1, 1, and 2. Well this is the direction vector, sort of the slope if you will, the gradient vector of line 1. And line 2 contains the coordinate, the, the initial point of 1, 2, 4, and we have a direction vector of 2, 1, and 6. Well, we just, you may just be learning vectors, right? So we have vectors that are going in the same direction, and then that's fine, but you can also, with the idea of parallel vectors, those vectors can be going in opposite directions, but have the same, um, basically the same gradient, but uh, maybe with just a, multiple of, a scalar multiple of negative 1. So we're going to do a parallel check. Are these two lines in three space parallel? Well, if they're parallel, then they're arguably sort of like not skew. They may not intersect uh, with that different initial coordinate, but for the direction vectors that are defining the direction, the slopes of these lines, um, if they are parallel, parallel vectors are scalar multiples of, of themselves. So that means that we have or we're going to check, is negative 1, 1, 2, a scalar multiple of the vector 2, 1, 6. So <clears throat> what that means is basically we need to see, you know, we can see that is k going to be the same scalar multiple to convert this coordinate uh, or movement along the x-axis into this movement along the x-axis and such is also 1 times something going to be equal to 1. This movement along the y-axis is a is it a scalar multiple of this movement along the y-axis and then 2, um, k, and 6, the movement along the z-axis. So looking here we have negative 1 is equal to k times 2 which is going to mean after we divide by 2 that we have negative 1 half 
is equal to k. So that is the scalar multiple to um, look along the movement along the x-axis. If we do the same thing with the y's, we have this y uh, movement is equal to k, giving uh, then multiplied to this movement along the y-axis of 1, and here we get a scalar multiple of 1, which is equal to k. Well, negative 1 half is not equal to 1, so therefore these two gradient vectors are not parallel. Great. So these two lines are not pa parallel. That's half the check if you uh, want to show that these two lines are skew. So are they not parallel and not intersecting? So for that to be the case, just think about um, you know, saying we have line of y is equal to um, you know, 2x minus 3 and y is equal to negative 1x plus 7, like maybe an algebra 1 problem, uh, you know, finding where these two lines intersect, you would do that, at least in the way that I've given this to us, we would do that through substitution and you'd plug information about the second line into the first and start solving, start finding that point of intersection. Well, what that looks like with lines in vector form that are in 3 space, you're going to want to find the component forms, um, the parametric form, excuse me, of each of these lines and start trying to figure out what the scalar multiple is there uh, and if it's the same, if they intersect. So for line number one, we have any new x is going to be found by starting with our initial x coordinate of 1 and adding with it lambda times negative 1 and y, any new y coordinate that is on the first line is going to be found by doing our initial y coordinate of 2 and then plus lambda times positive 1 and every new z coordinate is going to be found by taking the original z coordinate of 2 and adding it times lambda times 2. That's for line 1. Now for line 2, we have x is equal to, going into parametric form, the x coordinate of any point along the line is going to be found by doing 1 plus 2 mu. I'm just going to put the co coefficient first like it kind of normally would be written. Our new y coordinates are going to be equal to um, 2 plus mu and z is equal to uh, 4 plus 6 mu. So let's start substituting, you know, bringing together the information that we know in parametric form to these two lines, just like substitution with algebra 1. Let's bring together the x's. And if x is equal to 1 plus negative lambda and x is equal to 1 plus 2 lambda, well, those x coordinates would have to be equal if these lines are intersecting. So that's going to give us 1 minus, this, can, so this is for the x's, 1 minus lambda is equal to 1 plus 2 mu, meaning that we have, subtracting both sides by 1, we have negative uh, lambda is equal to 2 mu, and mu, or lambda then, is equal to negative 2 mu. Doing that with the y's, bringing these together, we have 2 plus lambda, is equal to 2 plus mu, which means lambda is equal to mu. So we're trying to now, you know, we're trying to solve the system of equations. And we have two equations here and two unknowns. We have lambda is equal to negative 2 mu, and we have lambda is equal to mu. If we bring these together through lambda, we have negative 2 mu is equal to mu, which then gives us sort of like if we divide both, by, both sides by mu, we have negative 2 which is equal to 1. So, okay, that's kind of weird. That doesn't really work. So really the only way that these two equations can be true at the same time is if lambda and mu are both equal to 0. So we've got now that the only lambda 
and mu that make these true at the same time is if mu is equal to zero and lambda is equal to zero. So can we put, now remember this is three space, not two space, and I've only matched up the movement along the x-axis and y-axis, so right now we're kind of like in two space. We need to look at three space with these values being the only values that create truth between these two equations. We plug in, you know, zero equals negative two times zero, zero equals zero, great, and zero equals zero, great. Then we need to be able to plug these values of mu and lambda into our parametric um, equations for z, which is z is negative uh, two plus two lambda. Let's pick a different color. Well, this is asking for lambda, and we've determined the only answer could be zero. The only number we could use is zero. And over here at z, we have four plus six mu. So four plus six mu. Well, by setting the component forms of the parametric forms of x and y together, that means that mu has to also be zero. And when I do that, I get two is equal to four for z. And that's a false statement. Now, I had that sort of weird statement as I tried to bring together the system of equations for x and y, but I had mu and lambda open in those equations and say, okay, well, this is bringing these together through substitution gives sort of what seems to be a false answer, unless both of these variables are zero, so we're kind of stuck there. But now, using the only possible values of mu and lambda that we could come up with, plugging those into z still gives us a false statement. So therefore, these lines do not intersect. Line one does not intersect line two, and line one and line two aren't parallel. So thus, we have shown, I probably should write this out in a sentence, but so we have shown in the two checks that these two lines are indeed skew. They're not parallel, and they do not intersect, so they have to be skew. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework.